All right, boys and girls, welcome back. We are looking at module three, lesson six, subtracting fractions with regrouping. But before we look at that, I wanna just jump back to last module, which was module two, and talk about the acronym that we had for our standard algorithm for division. We had, does McDonald's sell burgers raw? And we know the D standard for division, the M is for multiplication, S is for subtraction, B is for bring down and the R is for repeat. So this process or this or these this acronym are the steps that we needed to complete to solve any standard algorithm problem. Similar to that, we have another acronym that I want to introduce you to, and it's going to help us with the subtraction of fractions when we need to regroup or we need to rename our whole number as the unit. Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and walk through it. I'm going to move my uh, buddy here, I'll call him Rodney the Raccoon. I'm gonna move him over so that we can see what the letters actually stand for. M is gonna be for multiplication. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is take our denominators and multiply them by the opposite fraction using the equivalent form of one. So I'm gonna take it and say, we know that we have, let's go ahead and change this to black. I have times what equals what. And I have the same thing here, times what equals what. So I'm gonna take this three and bring it up top as a fraction of three over three, which I know is equal to one whole. So because I'm multiplying this by one whole, it's not this one and one fourth by one whole, it's not gonna change the amount or what it's worth. It's just gonna be equivalent fraction. I'm going to do the same thing here. Take my 4 from my top denominator and put it as a fraction of 1, 4 over 4. Now, I'm done with my first step. I'm going to multiply across and find my equivalent fraction. So I say, well, 1 times 1. I multiply my whole first. My whole times this 1, and I get 1 there. Then I say, well, 1 times 3 really saying one fourth times three thirds, and I get three twelfths. My second fraction here, I say one third times four fourths, and I get four twelfths. Now remember, this is a subtraction problem. So now I'm trying to subtract. I have three twelfths minus four twelfths. I don't have enough twelfths. So I did that, that's my equivalent fraction. But now I need to regroup or rename my one whole so I can get enough twelfths. So this one is going to now become 12 twelfths. And what I'm going to do once I do that, I'm going to add my 12 twelfths to my 3 twelfths. Let's go ahead and add those together. You know that 12 plus 3 is 15 twelfths. And then I'm going to do my final step of subtraction and say 15 twelfths minus 4 twelfths equals 11 twelfths. And that's my final answer. This may look like a lot, but once you get used to doing this and you're doing it consistently quickly, it won't be nearly or seem like it's uh, nearly as much. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more problems. Before we look at any other problems, let's just go ahead and take another look at the problem we just solved. And here's a full description of the steps that you're taking. So the first step was multiply. We multiplied our denominators. It says multiply each fraction by the opposite denominator using the denominator as a fraction equal to one whole. So here I took my four in my denominator and I made it equivalent to one whole. Four fourths equals one whole. Then I took my three, went up here, and made it three thirds, which is also equal to one whole. And then I found my equivalent fraction by multiplying. I multiplied across and said one times one equals one. One fourth times three thirds equals three twelfths. And then here I said one third times four fourths equals four twelfths. Renamed or decomposed if I didn't have enough to subtract. I had three twelfths. I couldn't subtract four twelfths from three twelfths, or I couldn't say three twelfths minus four twelfths. So I had to change my one whole into twelve twelfths. And then I added my decomposed units to the original units, 12 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, 
gave me 15 twelfths, and then I subtracted. All right, so let's go ahead and go through a couple more. So I'm going to just write my acronym down at the bottom so that I can check to make sure I'm going through every step. I would suggest that you do the same. If you're familiar with this and you don't need this, then by all means, you don't have to use it, but it's just something, uh, another tool to add to your tool belt. So my elderly raccoon ate spinach. All right, so now I know. Multiply. I like to write out my times what equals what. So I'm going to multiply, take my five-fifths, bring it down here, take my three, and it's going to become three-thirds because I want to multiply by a fraction of equal to one or equivalent to one. Now I'm going to define my equivalent fractions by multiplying across. One times one is one. One-fifth times three-thirds is going to be three-fifteenths. One-third times five-fifths is going to be five-fifteenths. Did that. I cannot subtract here. 3 minus 5, 3 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths, I cannot do. So I'm going to have to rename or regroup. I'm going to cross out my 1. It's going to come over here. Equivalent to 1 15 fifteenths is equal to 1 whole. Now I have to add. I add my fractions here. 15 fifteenths, which is equal to 1 whole, plus 3 fifteenths equals 18 fifteenths. Now I can do my subtraction. 18 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths. 18 minus 5 is 13 fifteenths. There we have it. All right, let's take a look at one more really quickly. So my elderly raccoon ate spinach. Multiply by Excuse me, we're going to multiply our opposite denominators in the form of 1. So my 2 halves are going to go here, and 8 eighths is going to go here. All I did was take this number here, move it down in fraction form, took this 2, moved it there in fraction form equivalent to 1. Right? Remember, so this is equivalent to 1, as is this equivalent to 1. Multiply across 1 times 1. 3 eighths times 2 halves, 3 times 2, 8 times 2, 8 times 1, 2 times 8. Now I have one whole and parts of a whole. We know that 6 16 is less than a whole. So I have, have, I'm going to try to subtract my 6 16 minus 8 16. I can't do that, so I need to regroup. I already did these steps. Now I'm going to regroup or rename my whole. So this one whole is going to now become what? Fraction form that's equivalent to my units here. Excuse me, it's equivalent to 1, but it's using the compatible units. So I have 16 16. So now I'm going to add these together. And I get 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 10 is 22. 16. Last step, subtract. 22 sixteenths minus 8 sixteenths. I know that I would regroup. It's going to be 12. It's going to become a 1. So 8 minus 12 is 4. And I have 110, 14 sixteenths. Now, remember, these are both divisible by 2. So 14 sixteenths is also equal to 7 eighths. If they ask you to simplify, this is going to be the answer here. If you're not asked to simplify, you can simply use it as, leave it as 14 sixteenths. Hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in coach class. And I'll do my best to make sure that you fully understand this. The more you use your brain, the stronger it grows. So continue to work hard, boys and girls. Thank you so much.